Book Nine, Chapters Thirty Two through Thirty Five, Volume One of Le Morte d'Arthur. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Le Morte d'Arthur, Volume One, by Sir Thomas Mallory. Book Nine, Chapters Thirty Two through Thirty Five. Chapter Thirty Two. Then the king, with the hundred knights, withdrew his knights. And all this while, and long to fore, Sir Launcelot had watched upon Sir Tristram, with a very purpose to have fellowshipped with him. And then suddenly Sir Tristram, Sir Dinadan, and Gurneval, his man, rode their way into the forest, that no man perceived where they went. So then King Arthur blew into lodging, and gave the king of Northgallus the prize, because Sir Tristram was upon his side. Then Sir Launcelot rode here and there, so wood as lion that fought at his fill, because he had lost Sir Tristram, and so he returned unto King Arthur. And then in all the field was a noise, that with the wind it might be heard two miles thence, how the lords and ladies cried, The knight with the black shield hath won the field. Alas, said King Arthur, where is that knight become? It is shame to all those in the field so to let him escape away from you, but with gentleness and courtesy you might have brought him unto me to the castle of maidens." Then the noble King Arthur went unto his knights, and comforted them in the best wise that he could, and said, My fair fellows, be not dismayed, howbeit you have lost the field this day. And many were hurt, and sore wounded, and many were whole. My fellows, said King Arthur, look, that ye be of good cheer, for to-morrow morn I will in the field with you, and revenge you of your enemies. So that night King Arthur and his knights reposed themselves. The demoiselle that came from La Belle Isson unto Sir Tristram, all the while the tournament was a-doing, she was with Queen Guinevere, and ever the queen asked her for what cause she came into that country. Madam, she answered, I come for none other cause but from my lady, La Belle Isode, to wit of your welfare. For in no wise would she not tell the queen that she came for Sir Tristram's sake. So this lady, Dame Brigwaine, took her leave of Queen Guinevere, and she rode after Sir Tristram. And as she rode through the forest she heard a great cry. Then she commanded her squire to go into the forest to wit what was that noise. And so he came to a well, and there he found a knight bounden till a tree, crying as he had been wood, and his horse and his harness standing by him. And when he espied that squire, therewith he upbraid and brake himself loose, and took his sword in his hand, and ran to have slain the squire. Then he took his horse, and fled all that ever he might unto Dame Brigwing, and told her of his adventure. Then she rode unto Sir Tristram's pavilion, and told Sir Tristram what adventure she had found in the forest. Alas, said Sir Tristram, upon my head there is some good knight at mischief. Then Sir Tristram took his horse and his sword, and rode thither, and there he heard how the knight complained unto himself, and said, I, woeful knight Sir Palomides, what misadventure befalleth me? that I am thus defoiled with falsehood and treason, through Sir Bors and Sir Ector. Alas, he said, why live I so long? And then he got his sword in his hands, and made many strange signs and tokens, so that through his raging he threw his sword into that fountain. Then Sir Palamides wailed and rang his hands, and at the last, for pure sorrow, he ran into that fountain, over his belly, and sought after his sword. Then Sir Tristram saw that, and ran upon Sir Palamides, and held him in his arms fast. What art thou, said Palamides, that holdeth me so? I am a man of this forest that would thee none harm. Alas, said Sir Palamides, I may never win worship where Sir Tristram is, for wherever he is, and I be there, then I get no worship, and if he be away for the most part I have the gree, unless that Sir Launcelot be there, or Sir Lamorak. Then Sir Palamides said, once in Ireland Sir Tristram put me to the worse, and another time in Cornwall, and in other places in this land. What would ye do, said Sir Tristram, and ye had Sir Tristram? I would fight with him, said Sir Palamides, and ease my heart upon him, and yet to say thee sooth, Sir Tristram is the gentlest knight in this world living. What will ye do, said Sir Tristram, will you go with me to your lodging? Nay, said he, I will go to the king with the hundred knights, for he rescued me from Sir Borstaganus and Sir Ector, and else I had been slain traitorly. Sir Tristram said to him such kind words that Sir Palamides went with him to his lodging. Then Gournevel went to fore, and charged Dame Brigwain to go out of the way to her lodging, and bid ye Sir Persides that he make him no quarrels. 
And so they rode together till they came to Sir Tristram's pavilion, and there Sir Palamides had all the cheer that might be had all that night. But in no wise Sir Palamides might not know what was Sir Tristram, and so after supper they yet to rest, and Sir Tristram for great travail slept till it was day. And Sir Palamides might not sleep for anguish, and in the dawning of the day he took his horse privily, and rode his way unto Sir Geharis and unto Sir Sangramore le Desirous, where they were in their pavilions, for they three were fellows at the beginning of the tournament. And then upon the morn the king blew unto the tournament upon the third day. Chapter 33 so the king of North Gallus and the king with the hundred knights, they too encountered with the king Caradas and with the king of Ireland, and there the king with the hundred knights smote down king Caradas, and the king of North Gallus smote down the king of Ireland. With that came in Sir Palamides, and when he came he made great work, for by his indented shield he was well known. So came in King Arthur, did great deeds of arms together, and put the king of North Gallus and the king with the hundred knights to the worse. With this came in Sir Tristram with his black shield, and anon he jousted with Sir Palamides, and there by fine force Sir Tristram smote Sir Palamides over his horse's croup. Then King Arthur cried, Knight with the black shield, make thee ready to me, and in the same wise Sir Tristram smote King Arthur. And then by force of King Arthur's knights the king and Sir Palamides were horsed again. Then King Arthur, with a great eager heart, he got a spear in his hand, and there upon the one side he smote Sir Tristram over his horse. Then foot-hot Sir Palamides came upon Sir Tristram, as he was upon foot, to have overridden him. Then Sir Tristram was ware of him, and there he stooped aside, and with great ire he got him by the arm, and pulled him down from his horse. Then Sir Palamides lightly arose, and then they dashed together mightily with their swords, and many kings, queens, and lords stood and beheld them. And at the last Sir Tristram smote Sir Palamides upon the helm three mighty strokes, and at every stroke that he gave him he said, This is for Sir Tristram's sake. With that Sir Palamides fell to the earth, grovelling. Then came the king with a hundred knights, and brought Sir Tristram an horse, and so he was horsed again. By then was Sir Palamides horsed, and with great ire he jousted upon Sir Tristram with his spear as it was in the rest, and gave him a great dash with his sword. Then Sir Tristram avoided his spear, and got him by the neck with both his hands, and pulled him clean out of his saddle, and so he bare him afore the length of ten spears, and then in the presence of them all he let him fall at his adventure. Then Sir Tristram was ware of King Arthur with a naked sword in his hand, and with his spear Sir Tristram ran upon King Arthur, and then King Arthur boldly abode him, and with his sword he smote a two his spear, and wherewithal Sir Tristram stonied. And so King Arthur gave him three or four strokes, or he might get out his sword, and at the last Sir Tristram drew his sword, and either assailed, passing hard. With that the great press departed them. Sir Tristram rode here and there, and did his great pain, that eleven of the good knights of the blood of King Ban, that was of Sir Lancelot's kin, that day Sir Tristram smote down, that all the estates marvelled of his great deeds, and all cried upon the knight with the black shield. CHAPTER Thirty Four. Then this cry was so large that Sir Lancelot heard it, and then he got a great spear in his hand and came towards the cry. Then Sir Lancelot cried, The knight with the black shield, make thee ready to joust with me. When Sir Tristram heard him say so, he got his spear in his hand, and either abashed down their heads, and came together as thunder, and Sir Tristram's spear brake in pieces, and Sir Lancelot by malfortune struck Sir Tristram on the side a deep wound nigh to the death, but yet Sir Tristram avoided not his saddle, and so the spear brake. Therewithal Sir Tristram that was wounded got out his sword, and he rushed to Sir Lancelot. Therewithal Sir Tristram that was wounded got out his sword, and he rushed to Sir Lancelot, and gave him three great strokes upon the helm, that the fire sprang thereout, and Sir Lancelot abashed his head lowly toward his saddle-bow. And therewithal Sir Tristram departed from the field, for he felt him so wounded that he weaned he should have died, and Sir Dinadon espied him, and followed him into the forest. Then Sir Lancelot abode, and did many marvellous deeds. So when Sir Tristram was departed by the forest's side, he alighted, and unlaced his harness, and freshed his wound, then weaned Sir Dinadon that he should have died. Nay, nay, said Sir Tristram, Dinadon never dread thee, for I am whole-hearted, and of this wound I shall soon be whole by the mercy of God. 
By that Sir Dinadan was ware where came Palamides riding straight upon him. And then Sir Tristram was ware that Sir Palamides came to have destroyed him. And so Sir Dinadan gave him warning, and said, Sir Tristram, my lord, ye are now so sore wounded that ye may not have ado with him. Therefore I will ride against him, and do to him what I may. And if I be slain, ye may pray for my soul. And in the meanwhile ye may withdraw, and ye go into the castle, or in the forest, that he shall not meet with you. Sir Tristram smiled, and said, Thank you, Sir Dinadan, of your good will, but ye shall wit that I am able to handle him. And then anon hastily he armed, and took his horse, and a great spear in his hand, and said to Sir Dinadan, Adieu, and rode towards Sir Palamides a soft pace. Then when Sir Palamides saw that, he made countenance to amend his horse, but he did it for this cause, for he abode Sir Geheris that came after him. And when he was come, he rode towards Sir Tristram. Then Sir Tristram sent unto Sir Palamides, and required him to joust with him, and if he smote down Sir Palamides he would do no more to him, and if it so happened that Sir Palamides smote down Sir Tristram, he bade him do his utterance. So they were accorded. Then they met together, and Sir Tristram smote down Sir Palamides that he had a grievous fall, so that he lay still as he had been dead. And then Sir Tristram ran upon Sir Geheris, and he would not have jousted, but whether he would or not, Sir Tristram smote him over his horse's croup, that he lay still as though he had been dead. And then Sir Tristram rode his way, and left Sir Persides' squire within the pavilions, and Sir Tristram and Sir Dinadan rode to an old knight's place to lodge them. And that old knight had five sons at the tournament, for whom he prayed God heartily for their coming home. And so, as the French book saith, they came home, all five well beaten. And when Sir Tristram departed into the forest, Sir Lancelot held away the stour like hard, as a man enraged that took no heed to himself, and wit ye well there was many a noble knight against him. And when King Arthur saw Sir Lancelot do so marvellous deeds of arms, he then armed him, and took his horse and his armour, and rode into the field to help Sir Lancelot, and so many knights came in with King Arthur. And to make short tale and conclusion, the King of North Gallus and the King of the Hundred Knights were put to the worse, and because Sir Lancelot abode, and was the last in the field, the prize was given him. But Sir Lancelot would neither for king, queen, nor knight have the prize, but where the cry was heard through the field, Sir Lancelot, Sir Lancelot, hath won the field this day, Sir Lancelot let make another cry contrary, Sir Tristram hath won the field, for he began first, and last he hath endured, and so hath he done the first day, the second, and the third day. CHAPTER Thirty Five. Then all the estates and degrees, high and low, said of Sir Lancelot great worship, for the honour that he did unto Sir Tristram, and for that honour doing to Sir Tristram he was at that time more praised and renowned than an he had overthrown five hundred knights, and all the people wholly for this gentleness, first the estates both high and low, and after the commonality cried at once, Sir Lancelot hath won the field, whosoever say nay. Then was Sir Lancelot wroth and ashamed, and so therewithal he rode to King Arthur. Alas, said the king, we are all dismayed that Sir Tristram is thus departed from us. By God, said King Arthur, he is one of the noblest knights that I ever saw hold spear in sword or hand, and the most courteous knight in his fighting. For full hard I saw him, said King Arthur, when he smote Sir Palamides upon the helm thrice, that he abashed his helm with his strokes, and also he said, here is a stroke for Sir Tristram, and thus thrice he said. Then King Arthur, Sir Lancelot, and Sir Dinadas le Sauvage took their horses to seek Sir Tristram, and by the means of Sir Persides he had told King Arthur where Sir Tristram was in his pavilion. But when they came there, Sir Tristram and Sir Dinadan were gone. Then King Arthur and Sir Lancelot were heavy, and returned again to the Castle of Maidens, making great dole for the herd of Sir Tristram, and his sudden departing. So God help me, said King Arthur, I am more heavy that I cannot meet with him than for all the hurts that all my knights have had at the tournament. Right so came Sir Gerharis, and told King Arthur how Sir Tristram had smitten down Sir Palamides, and it was at Sir Palamides's own request. Alas, said King Arthur, that was great dishonour to Sir Palamides, inasmuch as Sir Tristram was sore wounded, and now may we all, kings and knights and men of worship, say that Sir Tristram may be called a noble knight and one of the best knights that I ever saw the days of my life. For I will that ye all, kings and knights, know, said King Arthur, that I never saw knight do so marvellously as he hath done these three days. 
for he was the first that began, and the longest held on, save this last day. And though he was hurt, it was a manly adventure of two noble knights, and when two noble men encounter, needs must the one have the worst, like as God will suffer at that time. As for me, said Sir Launcelot, for all the lands that ever my father left me, I would not have hurt Sir Tristram, and I had known him at that time. That I hurt him was not for I saw his shield. For and had I seen his black shield, I would not have meddled with him for many causes, for late he did as much for me as ever did knight, and that is well known that he had ado with thirty knights, and no help save Sir Dinadon. And one thing shall I promise, said Sir Launcelot, Sir Palamide shall repent it, as in his unkindly dealing, for to follow that noble knight that I, by mishap, herded thus. Sir Launcelot said all the worship that might be said by Sir Tristram. Then King Arthur made a great feast to all that would come. And thus we let pass King Arthur, and a little while we will turn unto Sir Palamides. After that he had a fall of Sir Tristram. He was nigh hand arraged out of his wit for despite of Sir Tristram. And so he followed him by adventure. And as he came by a river, in his woodness he would have made his horse to have leapt over, and the horse failed footing and fell in the river. Wherefore Sir Palamides was a dread lest he should have been drowned, and then he avoided his horse, and swam to the land, and let his horse go down by adventure. End of Book 9, Chapters 32-35